It's, it's not a job, it's a life. It's just like, I want this life. Would you welcome Jerry Seinfeld? Seinfeld. The one, the only, Jerry Seinfeld, ladies and gentlemen. He's the most famous comedian on the planet. When I wake up in the morning and I realize I'm me, I go berserk. Do you like being a big star? It's the greatest. And he's one of the best comedians right. on the planet. <laughs> Let's talk about your show. Okay, I got I got a show. It's the hot summer hit, soon to be a series, Seinfeld. Well, I don't want to be a pirate. You got the biggest show on TV. One of television's most popular shows ever. Critical success. The critics call it a winner. Thank you very much. Rating success. One of the most popular sitcoms of all time. Huge dough. <laughs> you quit when you're top of the game. Jerry Seinfeld is quitting. What the hell were you thinking? I want my life to be about this thing. I always wanted to be a comedian. In my whole, I wanted to be a comedian. Really, success wasn't my objective. That other stuff doesn't mean anything to me, seriously. It's 20 years later. I am a comedian. This is what I do. It's like, fish, I'm gonna swim. They always preach this thing of likability on TV. Jerry Seinfeld is a funny stand-up comic, but the guy uses people. You have to be a kind of ruthless person. Relationships were very expendable to me. What would you say typifies the kind of woman that you enjoy? Jerry Seinfeld, 39, and Shoshana Lonstein, 18. All eyes were on Seinfeld, sexy sidekick. A 17-year-old high school student at the time. I hate being the center of attention. I'm very uncomfortable. Do you feel socially awkward? Yes. Why? I don't know what to say to these people. <laughs> this video is brought to you by Surfshark. 1962. Somewhere in Massapequa, New York, a little boy's eyes are glued to his TV set. Game over and out. Nice to have you back where you belong. The son of two orphans, little Jerry Seinfeld had plenty of childhood freedom. I was like a raccoon to my parents. Complete neglect. They had no interest in any of my activities, school, grades, health, safety, or education. <laughs> so he did what any child would. Watch television. A lot of it. Night after night, Jerry watched these grown-ups effortlessly entertain. And at a young age... And I would get on my toy box, and I would do little routines. He had fun with it, but he never thought he'd be like the guys on TV. The first is being funny for your friends, which a lot of people are. Yeah. Then there's a the thing of being funny for people who have no idea who you are. Nineteen seventy-six. Jerry, now 21, still can't get comedy out of his mind. And on the day he graduated from Queens College, he took the subway to his first stand-up gig. When I first stepped on stage as a comedian, I really had no idea if I was funny or not. Because Jerry was hardly a clown at home. You were not the class clown, right? No, not really. You know, when I told them I, th I think I want to be a comedian, and they went, okay. <laughs> you know, you've never done anything funny. And... And when Jerry stepped up on that stage for the first time. The first time? Yeah. Because you weren't a great success there. I mean, there was like three lines and you walked off. And what happened? I, I couldn't remember anything that I was going to say. <laughs> well, I didn't say anything. It was one of the reasons I bombed so badly. It was a disaster. But nonetheless, Jerry caught the bug. In the next few months, he became an open mic regular, adamant on making this joke thing work. And something clicked. When I first saw Jerry Seinfeld, I said, this guy's got it. Jerry was good from the start. You always had great material. Great material. Mm -hmm. Celebrity Cabaret. 1977. Celebrity. On an episode of Celebrity Cabaret, a certain someone makes his first TV appearance. The city's on the verge of bankruptcy. They're putting up rides for us. And <laughs> next thing you know, we'll have a roller coaster through the ghetto, which. And the ball starts rolling. That's the whole point of Magic. You realize he comes on, fools you, you'll feel stupid, show's over. Why would a priest and a Lutheran ride a rabbi across the desert? In 1980, Jerry lands himself a role on the sitcom Benson. Do you know why a priest crosses himself? <laughs> to get to the other side. But it doesn't go so great. I like everything about you except your jokes. But they're funny. They're not funny, Frankie. He had been a semi-regular on a show called Benson and had had a terrible experience. There's two episodes, I think, and I showed up for the third and I was fired, but I didn't know it. While embarrassing, it didn't shake Jerry. He loved one thing, and that was stand-up. He went straight back to the clubs, training hard. Night after night, show after show after show. Would you welcome him, please? Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry! The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Every rising comedian's dream opportunity. But one thing was for certain. This was a make 
or break moment. I had never been in front of 500 people before. Oh just, my God. Just the studio audience. I'd never seen an audience that big. Very impressive. Also very lucky for the Swiss Army. Do you think you did a decent performance the first time you were on nah, there? It was okay. I, I wasn't that happy with it. He didn't start convincingly, but soon enough, he found his rhythm. If the little Willie guy on the wall gets a raincoat, I know what's happening. And once he got that first laugh, it all came flowing. I gotta get all new clothes now. The first level is this. The okay You symbol. get the okay. I got that, and that was still the greatest moment of my life. <laughs> right. Are you tired of worrying about your online privacy? Want to keep your personal information safe from hackers and prying eyes? Then you need Surfshark. I don't like the idea of strangers spying on me when I'm online. And I want my personal data to be safe. With Surfshark, you can browse the internet with complete anonymity. Your personal information is encrypted and protected from hackers and thieves. I use Surfshark to protect my online privacy while I'm on the go. Plus, you can access content from anywhere in the world. And I can watch my favorite television show anywhere I want. With access to over 3,000 servers in 100 countries, Surfshark lets you browse freely and securely. And with Surfshark's clean web feature, keep your device virus-free and say goodbye to all ads, trackers, and malware. Surfshark makes the World Wide Web a whole lot safer. Don't wait. Sign up below with code Dodford for 83% off and three extra months free. Surfshark. Secure your digital life today. Day off, he can take you down there if you like. It's comedian Carol Leifer's birthday party. Her friend, Larry David, another comedian, has gifted her some jokes to deliver. But after a few too many drinks, I was kind of too drunk to read the material. Carol then offers the jokes to her other friend, Jerry Seinfeld. And I got big laughs reading this routine. And it was kind of the first time that I thought maybe we would be a good team. And they were. I liked the sound of the conversations that he and I would have. Every time Larry and I would chat, it was funny to me. He and I would just talk, and we would just write it down. With Jerry quickly becoming a favorite on The Tonight Show and his stand-up career blossoming, the executives at NBC had a proposition. What is it, Jerry, that you would like to do on television? We'd like to do it with you. It was a shock. I was very uncomfortable. It was a big opportunity to do my own situation comedy. Well, I think you could be a movie star and tell us. Are you interested Bob. maybe in a series? No. Or? I wasn't quite sure who to be or how to be. I'm going to be just me as a comedian. And this is my life. Let's talk about your show. OK. I got, I got a show. I got a shot, Bob. Tomorrow night, see? The big night. Yeah, huh? tomorrow night. 9.30, tomorrow night, Thursday night. I can't oh, believe it. Prime time, NBC. How did this all happen? Which says something about the way your career is going. It's moving up. I wrote it with uh, Larry David, who's a comedian from New York, yeah. and uh, neither of us had ever written a TV show before. We didn't really have any idea how to run a show. Larry and I, who, who were writing this thing, we've never written a TV show before. Is there a chance it could be a, become a regular series in the fall? There's a chance, sure. There's a chance. There's a chance of anything, really. But the reality was, things weren't great. When did you know it was going to work? Right away? No. I figured there's no way I, I, we're going we're gonna to do a show that people are going to like. But I never thought this was a mainstream thing. I thought it was too eccentric. The research came in. Preview audiences hated it. That famous NBC research note? Yeah. Do you still have that frame? Sure, yeah. Here? This is the audience test on the pilot back in 1989. In one of the worst documents in the history of research, Seinfeld Chronicles, overall results Pilot performance, weak, weak, weak. No, I figured we were dead at that point. <laughs> it was over. It was a setback for Jerry Seinfeld and his team. See, now to me, that button's in the worst possible spot. The second button literally makes or breaks the shirt. Look at it. But it didn't stop their vision. It's a show about little things that you do in life. I think I can sum up the show for you with one word. Nothing happens. Uh, am I am I missing pages? Nothing. This was the idea. What if we had two guys talking? We we wanted to be a, a palate cleanser for a lot of the style of sitcom that we've seen for a long time. And we wanted to be a little more uh, realistic, I guess. Shoot mine. <laughs> Reality is crucial to your show. Doesn't something have to happen in this show? Nobody else's opinion really mattered. Jerry and Larry didn't care. This was the show about nothing. The door! It must be closed! And they were proud of it. 
But there was a major reason why viewers eventually latched on to Seinfeld. Handmade. This is a sitcom <laughs> that is not is not processed yeah. through a network, through a large studio system, and the cast is is amazing. I'm out. <laughs> Each one of the people in our cast is could easily hold down their own show. It was extraordinary that we all were lucky enough to come together. I, I'm really just an amazingly lucky person that I got involved with the people that I got involved with. with Jason and Julia and Michael and Larry David and there were so many, uh, yeah, there it was. But it was much more than luck. The star of the show, Pirates. the executive producer, the head writer, You're gonna stay with you. casting and editing. Well, at least let me audition. We killed ourselves to make those shows as good as they were. They weren't, we weren't just hanging around. By 1992, Seinfeld was really finding its feet. But with the show taking off, there was a lot on Jerry's shoulders. I know everybody's life is hard and every job is hard. Enough, but I mean, when it's your name on the goddamn show, the pressure is, it's, it's intense. I don't have a lot of experience with this anything stuff. And then the show got successful and everybody expected each week to be even better than the last. And it was a lot of pressure. Oh my God, you're crying. This is horrible. But despite this pressure, Jerry Seinfeld was focused. Focused on his career. Maybe not relationships. What does it take to be a successful comedian? You, you have to be a kind of ruthless person. Career has absolutely <laughs> absorbed my life. Yeah. I don't even know if I have a life other than that. Relationships other than friendships with other comedians were very expendable to me. If I didn't have such an enjoyable career, I'd probably have a wife. After a while, you'll see the life of a single man. Yeah. can be a lonely one, Garrett. <laughs> the reason you become a comedian is you're not a good collaborator. You're not good with people. I hate being the center of attention. I'm very uncomfortable. Do you feel socially awkward? Yes. You're not good in social things, situations or professional situations. You're not really good at anything. I'd rather be in front of those 5,000 people than in this group right here. Why? I don't know what to say to these people. <laughs> Chalk it up to his social anxiety or his focus on work, but Jerry Seinfeld wasn't interested in love. But in 1993, someone came along that changed his mind. Now, do you get a lot of fan mail from uh, women who like to get to know you a little better? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. What would you say typifies the kind of woman that you enjoy? She was just 17. You know what I mean. Jerry Seinfeld is dating a teenager in New York City. I'm not sure I do know what you mean, Sir Paul. Look who's in love. Jerry Seinfeld, 39, and Shoshana Lonstein, 18, make an unlikely romance work. When he was 30-something and she was 17. Who was a 17-year-old high school student at the time. Shoshana Lonstein, a UCLA student half his age. In May 1993, Jerry Seinfeld met Shoshana Lonstein in Central Park, where... She was sitting on a park bench, like, doing her homework or something. She was 17. Jerry had recently turned 39. Despite this, they get chatting, and Jerry leaves with Shoshana's phone number. Not much later, they're seen at a restaurant together, and word catches on. Jerry insists he only knew her age once it went public. Naturally, the news spreads like wildfire. Howard Stern performing a song created especially for Jerry Seinfeld. In a New Year's Eve special event, Howard Stern makes his opinion well, clear on stage. Seinfeld's girl is 17, innocent with double D's, seducing girls in a limousine. Why does fans think that he's so damn clean? Either way, Jerry continues staying public with Shoshana, even taking her to events. She sits like a little bit away so Jerry isn't photographed with a 14-year-old or whatever old she is. <laughs> Spy magazine pokes fun at Seinfeld, calling Shoshana a legal voter. There was an initial period of tabloid drama, but then it cooled down. They had every chance to really stick the knife in, says Jerry in an interview with Playboy, and they didn't do it. Seinfeld wasn't ashamed of the 21-year age gap. How do you keep private what you want to keep private? Don't have anything private that needs to be private. There's nothing about my life that you would see out in public that 
embarrasses me. He even joked about the relationship, saying, the great thing is you can go out on a date and pick up a little babysitting money on the side. That pays for the pizza. It didn't make me cringe, says Seinfeld co-star Julia Louis-Dreyfus. She's a terribly nice person, so I was in favor of it. Come on, who cares? There wasn't anything wrong with it. I thought it was great. Even Shoshana's family were accepting. Shoshana is very mature. Jerry is thoughtful, a good person. But what did Shoshana herself feel about all this attention? Seinfeld claims, didn't bother her a bit. Shoshana doesn't seem to have really spoken out about this relationship, but I'm sure it was a very difficult time. Seinfeld takes the stage in Vegas, but it's the sexy Shoshana who's stealing his spotlight. Growing up as a teenager, as my body changed, you know, being a teenager is difficult enough as sure. it is. But it was Shoshana's poolside show that had everyone really talking. But to feel uncomfortable or to feel like nothing fits you properly and maybe to look too sexy. All eyes were on Seinfeld's sexy sidekick as she lay about the pool in skimpy bikinis. Can we really dangerous and and um, it's damaging to your self-esteem. It was the same year he was nominated for two Emmys and a Golden Globe and she was planning the prom. September 1993. Seinfeld wins an Emmy for Best Comedy Series. Let's hear it for these kids. Thank you very much. We're very honored. Thank you. How do you top this? Why do we have to top it? I don't know. It looks nice the way it is, doesn't it? Yeah, I think we've done it. I think we're successful. Jerry Seinfeld was the man of the moment. And Seinfeld, it was only speeding up. How are you doing, Jerry? This is a once in a decade or two decades kind of thing. But really, you've got quite a following. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's going great. It's, it's been unbelievable. I really never thought it was going to catch on like it, like it has been. One of television's most popular shows ever. The number one TV show of all time. You have the number one show on NBC. You are NBC, all right? Yes. You won an Emmy. You had a number one book. Yeah. You really think you're something, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> By season five, Jerry was earning $100,000 an episode. By season nine, he'd negotiated 10 times more at $1 million per episode. This put him as the highest paid TV star ever, with Forbes solidifying him as 1998's highest earning celebrity. At $225 million. Jerry was on top of the world. America's most famous man, responsible for America's most favorite show. NBC didn't want that ball to stop rolling. And, and believe me, they offered me a lot of money $110 to stay. million. Dollars really? Heard. Yes. They offer Jerry $5 million an episode for a 10th season. $110 million. That kind of money. It's a no-brainer. Right? After nine years, it's over. Jerry Seinfeld is quitting. Last week, he announced that after nine seasons, he was pulling the plug on his highly successful NBC sitcom. Season nine of Seinfeld earned the show's highest viewers, rating, and TV ranking. They were literally at their peak. So why on earth quit now? It was such a big thing in my life mm -hmm. to try and figure that out in the moment. Every day in the paper, you read, Countdown to the last Seinfeld. An awesome sight as hundreds of fans stood outside to watch the final episode on one of the world's largest television sets. You got the biggest show on TV. Critical success. Critical success. Rating success. Ratings. Huge dough. You quit when you're top of the game. What the hell were you thinking? <laughs> The Beatles ended too soon for me, and it was nine, it was also nine years. The Beatles are remembered as one of the greatest bands of all time. And a lot of the reason why is because they quit early. It's very rare for someone to go away when their comedy is on top. I didn't want them to have to say, oh, that show, I love that show. The last couple of years, it kind of, I didn't want to have to say yeah. a but. I think 20 years from now, this show will be revered as one of the greats of all time. So you leave the people wanting, because that's what we still, we were like, oh, Excited, whoa, yeah. Whoa, right. come back. Yeah. First of all, I am amazed by what has been going on. It's really only now that I'm realizing what, how, how many people the, the show touched. Jerry Seinfeld did get married, but not to Shoshana. They broke up in 1997. And you then met Jessica? Mm -hmm. In 98, Jerry meets Jessica Scalar, a PR executive while at the gym. This was the one when? Oh, right away. Right away. They connected instantly. 
and the pair soon went public. Jerry Seinfeld made the scene with girlfriend Jessica Sklar. Jessica had just returned home from a three-week honeymoon with her husband, Eric Nederlander, a marriage that didn't last much longer. The two have been spotted by paparazzi for months, and sources tell E.T. that Jessica's divorce has just become final. But he just know this is someone I want to spend my life with. Wow. <laughs> okay. He tied the knot with Jessica Schuyler in December of 1999, and the two of them are living happily in New York City. After nine years of Seinfeld, Seinfeld had to get back to where he knew he belonged. And life after Seinfeld is? I would really like to um, get back to being a real stand-up comedian again. With all that newfound wealth, why do you continue to come out here and perform? This is my thing. Really, success wasn't my objective. Money was not the thing. That other stuff doesn't mean anything to me. Seriously, this, this is what I'm about. This is what I really like to do. I think about what I'm doing, not where I'm getting. I always wanted to be a comedian. In my whole, I wanted to be a comedian. It's 20 years later. I am a comedian. New York City is out in force tonight for the send-off to Seinfeld. This was a historic moment. Fans questioned if the world was ending. Thank you, Seinfeld, for nine great years. So, is there life after Seinfeld? Life after Seinfeld. So you will miss Seinfeld? Yes. But for Jerry, life went on. It's almost a year since Seinfeld went off the air. I'm kind of on vacation right now. When will you go back on stage with Stan? Pretty soon. Another few months. I know you're going off to do this HBO special. And everything. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Seinfeld. Crazy, out of your mind. You all know my first guest. He's starring in a documentary film called Comedian. Boy, it feels good to be back. Yeah. I wanted people to get a sense of what it really feels like to be a comedian. I'm back here now. Time <laughs> <laughs> to tonight at 7:30. Tonight at 10:35 on Seinfeld on DVD. Hey, that guy just stole my DVD player. What am I not here? They should do a movie about bees and call it Bee Movie. Why don't you just make it a cartoon? DreamWorks B movie. You like jazz? <laughs> Love this movie. Oh, thank you very much. Do you see a lot of opportunities in the internet? Uh, I don't know. I, it's, it has rattled around my head a little bit. Well, gee, I know every funny person in the world. Hi, I'm Jerry Seinfeld, and this is Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. <laughs> Crackle finally picked it up. I could call a nuclear submarine right here from this. <laughs> <laughs> Seinfeld has just signed a new deal with Netflix. Netflix will offer all 180 episodes of Seinfeld. It's only on Netflix. 34 years after Seinfeld started, Jerry Seinfeld now sits with a net worth close to a billion dollars. Nobody can argue with his success. But what about the guy? You like Seinfeld? Like yeah, I stand up? Yeah, I'm a big Seinfeld guy. You don't think he's wildly overrated? No. He's the most famous comedian on the planet, right. and he's his, and he's one of the best comedians right. on the planet. Brilliant. Genius. But the guy uses people. I went and saw him at the Palladium, and it was one of the worst shows I've ever seen. You've always been the, one of the nicest guys in the business. You've always been ethical, classy, smooth, and the best stand-up comic uh, of our generation. Uh, Jerry yeah. Seinfeld, ladies and gentlemen. So, what is the deal with Jerry Seinfeld? I mean, what does it feel like to you to make people laugh? It's the best thing in the world. I feel like I'm supposed to make people laugh. The pure, weightless moment of existence. Where everything in your mind is just gone for a second. It's a, it's a very powerful feeling, but it, it is also a very generous feeling. It is a great release. Yeah. It really keeps you, me feeling good. I like it. When you're making 5,000 people laugh really hard, you feel that you've done a very nice thing. What's the happiest you've ever been? I guess now. Making jokes is not work. It's a gift. It's not hard. It's fun. You're, you're in show business. I mean, it's like a dream. We oftentimes fail to stop and go, you know what? This is pretty great. I, I never thought I could do what I'm doing now. And I'm very proud of the fact that uh, I uh, believed in myself. I gotta get all new clothes now. I'm in Afghanistan with real loaded weapons. It's not a job, it's a life. It's like going into the gym every day. Your blessing in life is when you find the torture you're comfortable with. What fun is life if I'm not making jokes all the but time? But you said it's a torture also. It's a torture I love. Wow, you really know yourself. I, I, I guess I do. Yeah. I guess I do.